Hello friends, it's Annabelle. I'm back in New York and have been for a while by the way. How are you doing? I hope that you enjoy the travel diaries because they were a joy but also an exhausting long series to make. I have been juggling in the last week going into the studio setting up. I have spent some time painting finally. So today we're gonna go in and do a cleanup. It does look a little bare and needs color and more decoration, but this is actually several hours of work. But first, taking a minute to talk about Skillshare before we start, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Back in April, I discovered this class called Color Masterclass, Simple Steps to Create Vivid Art, taught by Victo Nye, and I just got to take the course finally and really enjoyed it. This was a little spontaneous sketch I made last week, and I thought, why not use it for the in-class project? If you haven't heard of Skillshare, it's an online learning platform with over like a thousand in different courses whether it's in visual art like this as well as writing productivity like starting your own business how to time manage check them out in the link i have below and the first 1000 people will get a free trial of the skillshare premium membership and after that it's about ten dollars a month and for now let's go back to the studio so this is what we're working with. I have been sitting on the ground the entire time. I moved in in the beginning of summer. I knew I wanted to move a bunch of stuff in here. That's why I joined Luke on his move during the road trip. I was able to bring so many boxes of envelopes and that's what I use for shipping my prints and everything for the shop, by the way. Now I have everything here and it was really cost saving. And the table I'm setting up right now, if you remember in April, I mentioned that I grabbed this for free because in my building, somebody had moved out really fast. So the landlord came in and was just listing all of these random furniture pieces and trinkets for free. And I took this table and it's just the Ikea one, but the tabletop is really heavy. It's unlike the one I have at home. If I'm gonna be doing any sewing using this serger a lot of times the whole machine will wobble and using a sturdier desk for making stuff is always better and two of these legs have wheels on the bottom which makes the table easier to maneuver and stuff and I mix and match the, the, the table legs I might be shifting it if I ever am doing like a packing orders day so it's practically floating in the middle and I can walk around and have more access to whatever I might be working on because when you push it against the wall you do limit the workspace a lot Anyhow, the wheels help. But keeping this table clear might be easier said than done since I plan to have so much stuff around my oil painting station set up. I cannot wait. Not only have I been learning it very in a very disciplined manner since third grade, um, but it's also something that comforted me throughout school. So before I got into textiles, my love for it was revived during sophomore year of RISD when I took an elective for oil painting. That was actually so therapeutic and I would end my class day ready for lunch and I still had a whole afternoon left and that's when I realized it was really awesome to get up early and do a bunch of stuff. Some of my friends are like, you are happier when you're painting and I, I agree. I just have a hard time setting time for myself to get there again, but it's a goal of mine. The table happens to be the right width and height for testing. And this lovely thing that I'm taking out from the garbage bag is my first and only dress form. My dad bought it for me when I was, you know, dreaming of becoming an apparel designer and I was entering to our like high school district's fashion contest and I just felt so pro with this. So I love my dad for being so supportive. It's not the best quality since it's hollow and has a bunch of adjustable parts to it so that you can make like a range of sizes, even though the range is not big enough. In the meantime, this will have to go. And it's just good to have like a friendly, not face because she has no head, but a friendly face here in the studio. I don't have a name for her yet. If you have any suggestions, let me know. This is a shirt that I toss on when I'm painting in the studio in case I get dirty. Um, so she's gonna wear that for now. Okay, I finally got my drawers in. And it's time to install. I am opening up the Alex set of drawers that comes with wheels as well. I feel like almost every single person on earth who has Ikea drawers gets this one. I thought, okay, I'm going to go on Facebook Marketplace and everyone has these, right? So you can find it. So lo and behold, there is a listing with two of the smaller, narrower versions for I believe $70, which is more than half off. And I was really excited. So I messaged the lady like, oh, I'm 
able to pick it up tomorrow if that's possible. Nope, she never even replied. And then I got sold to someone else who probably beat me to it. I made two idiotic mistakes, okay? First of all, I was putting the wrong screws into the hole. So I just want to assemble it as we go, but it winds up wasting more time when you make a mistake. Second mistake I made was not paying attention to the hole size. This thing was upside down. And here I am taking a paint bottle and trying to jam the top wooden piece into it. And like maybe after five minutes of pounding, I was like, okay, honestly, I don't think this is right because it shouldn't be this hard. The manufacturers should probably not require this much force. And yep, I was right. Gotta go back to the manual. I am an idiot. Save yourself some time and heed my warnings. I'm finishing up the drawers now and it probably took me a couple hours to assemble on my own. All right, last step. Now we're good to go and I'm gonna start organizing the first tier is painting stuff and I'm probably gonna get like a vintage vase or something to keep my brushes on in the future. Second tier is sewing stuff, anything related to fabrics, needles. And then the third tier are more like old charcoal and like black and white mediums that I worked in in school. This is like really nostalgic. I feel like these are artifacts from the past. This is from that place in Providence. I got this in my first year. And then this was from a meet and greet, my first meet and greet in Taiwan. And three people showed up and one of them was Mary and she painted this for me. I'm realizing that this table is so deep, I cannot even reach anything. So I put the two wooden blocks that Luke used for our U-Haul trailer, he left them with me and thought like whenever I might need them, they could come in handy. I completely stuffed our studio's recycling bin. So this cardboard has to go out next time. And I'm saving the rest of the box to catch the yarn that I might snip off whenever I tuft, it becomes a giant mess in here. I still have to hang up a bunch of decor and it can be really cozy and settled in. Maybe by that time we can do an updated tour. For now, thanks so much for hanging out with me, listening to my story. I hope that you had fun in this wee Wednesday. Sending my love to you. Please take care and I'll see you next week for my weekly vlog. Bye-bye.